Hi, I'm Dr. Larry Malerba, and thanks for tuning in to All Things Homeopathy. In the last episode, I talked about how suppression compromises the vital force and drives illness deeper into the organism. Almost all pharmaceuticals operate on this principle. When a drug successfully targets and prevents a set of symptoms, it can provoke a backlash. Sooner or later, the life force generates new symptoms, symptoms that tend to be more serious than the original symptoms. Drugs often give a false impression of healing because symptoms improve in the short run. Because the compensatory backlash can occur days, weeks, or even months later, doctors and their patients frequently fail to recognize the connection between the original suppressive influence and the subsequent emergence of new health problems. Now let's consider what happens when genuine healing takes place. It should come as no surprise that real healing occurs in a direction opposite to suppression. While suppression causes illness to penetrate to deeper levels and more vital parts, true healing tends to drive illness toward the periphery. As healing takes place, more serious health problems are essentially re-channeled into less threatening, more superficial symptoms. For example, a child with recurrent ear infections is given a homeopathic prescription. The infections stop and the child's old eczema from two years ago returns. This is a positive development. The life force is redirecting the illness to the periphery. Since it would make no sense to return to the original therapy used to suppress the eczema, homeopath and patient continue to work together to ensure that the job is completed that is, until the eczema too clears up. As you can see, healing is a process. The disease process can move in a positive or negative direction. Suppression causes it to move in a negative direction, while healing moves in a positive direction. It was Dr. Constantine Herring, an early pioneer of homeopathic renown, who is credited with having formulated what has come to be known as Herring's Law of Cure. Herring's Law is a set of guidelines by which to judge whether true healing is taking place. According to these guidelines, cure occurs when symptoms move from inside out, from above downward, and in the reverse order from which they originally developed. Another way of putting it is that if genuine healing is taking place, the focus of an illness should move from the center of the body to the periphery, from more vital to less vital parts, and from more threatening to less threatening symptoms. Along the way, it's not unusual to experience the re-emergence of older health problems, but usually in a more minor way and for much shorter duration. Let's look at some examples of homeopathic treatment and Herring's Law in action. During homeopathic treatment, a young man with depression and self-esteem issues begins to note improved mood and greater confidence but also notes that over the past three months, he's had three bouts with cold symptoms. A woman with asthma notes the unprecedented disappearance of her wheezing, while at the same time she experiences an increase in her postnasal drip, which causes her to frequently clear her throat. A person with chronic insomnia reports dramatically improved sleep, but also the return of an old knee pain from years ago. A six-year-old child with a fear of the dark who sleeps in his parents' room every night suddenly finds the courage to sleep in his own room, and in the process he develops a chest cold with a cough. A woman having painful gallbladder attacks notes that the attacks have ceased, but now she's developed a vaginal yeast infection. A person with left knee arthritis reports that the pain has disappeared but now his right knee, which used to hurt years ago, is hurting again. In each case, we see at least one aspect of Herring's Law in action. In each case, the turn of events is a positive one, one that suggests that things are moving in the correct direction, and as Dr. Herring would have said, in the direction of cure. Please note that Herring's Law should not be taken literally. It is a set of guidelines that helps to determine whether a homeopathic case is moving in a positive direction. Another way to verify this is to simply ask. As part of my assessment, I often ask my patients if they believe that their current status is an improvement over their original condition when I first met them. 
An affirmative response will often confirm my conclusions based on my understanding of the dynamics of healing. To recap, genuine healing moves in a direction opposite to suppression, and there are reliable indicators that can help us judge whether or not true healing is taking place. Although mainstream medicine is completely oblivious of the dynamics of healing, homeopaths have known about them for 200 years. The human body carries within it a natural and innate healing wisdom. Homeopathy simply takes advantage of that wisdom in order to assist the vital force in its efforts to heal itself. Thanks for taking the time to watch. I hope you'll join me again for the next episode of All Things Homeopathy. Thank you.